a great audience. Thank you for joining us back for the final session of the day, the Sankalp Awards. 150 enterprises, 31 finalists, two regions, India and Southeast Asia, and it all comes down to this. Initiated in 2009 with the intent of identifying India's most scalable social enterprises in the country and now even Southeast Asia, the Sankalp Awards have grown in strength year on year. On an average, per year, we receive 45 new enterprise applications. Sankalp, as all of you may now have realized, focuses on five high-impact sectors, namely agriculture, food and rural businesses, clean energy, clean technology, education and vocational training, health, water and sanitation, technology for development. We will be identifying one winner from each of these sectors and one from the Southeast Asian region. Sourcing to management and value add to the enterprises that apply to the Sankalp Awards is a massive effort and a time intensive task. And the Sankalp team takes the job of bringing the best deal flow in the sector very seriously. This brief animation movie will try to explain the process associated with the awards year on year. Could we have the movie please? Our world has a lot of problems. People with a vision to change the world create outstanding solutions to these problems. Solutions that affect millions. Solutions that change lives. Solutions that are innovative and have the potential to create widespread impact. More popularly, these solutions are known as social enterprises. But the growth of these social enterprises depends on the access to funds, knowledge and skilled talent. So how can your social enterprise influence global communities? Well, here is our solution, the Sankalp Forum. Sankalp Forum, a platform to grow your business, build a global network and impact millions. But how do you become a Sankalp Enterprise? by applying to the Sankalp Awards. Sankalp Awards, showcasing the best social enterprises. Five high impact sectors. Two rounds of jury process where 30 innovative and scalable social enterprises are nominated as finalists from over 100 applications. The finalist enterprises receive Two days of residential boot camp experience with benefits like one-on-one -on -one training and business model development with experts, peer-to-peer -peer learning with fellow entrepreneurs, a two-month mentorship program, and then comes the grand finale. Here, finalist enterprises pitch their business model to a panel of leading investors and sector professionals who select five sector winners, one regional winner, and one grand prize winner. If your enterprise has an uncommon solution to a common problem, then we have a platform to make it happen. The Sankalp Forum, building a community of change agents. Our first awards of the evening will be the Diffid Samriti Sankalp Recognition for Women Empowerment Enterprise. The Sankalp Diffid Enterprise Recognition for Women Empowerment was initiated to recognize India's most promising social enterprise that is either co-founded by a woman entrepreneur or has products or services targeted to benefit underserved women consumers or is designed to hire more women employees. The four nominees in this segment were Priyadarshini Taxis, Vindhya Infomedia, Sukrut Systems, and InVenture. The jury session for this special women empowerment category was conducted in parallel with the sessions yesterday, and we would like to thank the esteemed jury for their support. Ms. Meenakshi Nath, Deputy Head, Defit India and Head Private Sector Team. Ms. Paula Morivala, Executive Director, Seed Fund. Vijay Lakshmi Das, Managing Director, Ananya Microfinance. Vandana Krishna, Secretary, Women and Child Welfare, Government of Maharashtra. And lastly, Chandra Ayengar, Executive Director, Maharashtra De Economic Development Council. 
I now invite Ms. Meenakshi Nath, Deputy Head DFID India and Head Private Sector to come on stage and talk about this recognition for a few minutes. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd just like to start by introducing DFID, which is uh, UK's Department for Development. So we manage the UK government's age budget, aid budget all over the world, and the aim is to alleviate poverty. India is one of the biggest country offices for DFID, uh, and we've been around for a few decades, even though we are the new kid on the block in this sector. Uh, we are currently uh, investing about 2,000 rupees, uh, 2,000 crore rupees every year um, overall in India. Uh, traditionally, our focus has been the social sectors. We work with the government uh, to improve the delivery of basic services and tend to use grant instruments. But what we have now introduced is a focus on private sector, using returnable capital, as we like to call it, which is loan and equity guarantees as well. Uh, and we aim at wealth creation, but of course for the poorer segments. Uh, we are focusing on the eight poorest, the major poorest states in this country. Um, we felt that India was the best place in the world to trial and test this approach. And uh, we want to harness the entrepreneurial talent, the passion that we've seen in these rooms over the last two days. So what is the focus of India's private sector program? We have uh, been allocated about 2,000 crores uh, to invest over the next three years. Um, the goal is to finance projects which help poor people, especially women, to improve their lives either as producers or as workers or consumers. We are looking at a few uh, partners and sectors which I'd just like to tell you about. Uh, the Government of India is keen, we work with government-sponsored institutions, but the main client at the end is the poor, and the main intermediary is actually the private sector, who has, we think, the most creative ideas, uh, the maximum efficiency and energy to achieve our goals. Our first project has already been approved and is under implementation. This is with SIDBI. Uh, it's 65 million over seven years. Uh, will be uh, roughly half of that will be aimed to promote microfinance in the eight, um, poorer states, and half will be for venture capital uh, projects, the social enterprises um, in eight poorer states. We build on a very successful partnership that we've had with SIDBI on microfinance development. Uh, we have uh, helped set up 245 microfinance institutions, We've helped to reach 6.6 .6 million clients through a project called the Nas National Microfinance Project, which was run between 2001 and 2008. Other projects that we are designing are the uh, one which will promote businesses that provide skills training. Now, this is through the NSDC. You heard them earlier today. We are looking at partnering with the National Innovations Council on their India Innovation, Inclusive Innovation Fund, as it's called. Uh, we are also looking at affordable housing with the National Housing Bank. And we're looking at a pretty major initiative on infrastructure with IDFC and IIFCL. Now, why this recognition for women? In DFID India's central focus is on women and girls. As we all know, they're the most vulnerable segment in our society and absolutely key to achieving development goals. We also felt that while there's huge energy in the field of social enterprise and lots of awards that are uh, given on sectoral basis, that it was about time that there was something that was specially focused on this segment. So even when we look at entrepreneurs, we felt that they were much fewer women than we would have liked to see. So hence our focus uh, on women enterprise, women focused enterprises and women entrepreneurs. Given our hypothesis that a lot needs to be done, we had a surprisingly strong field of contestants for this uh, recognition. The first was, uh, as you've heard, the Priya Darshini taxi service uh, promoted by Susian Ben Shah. Um, which 
We really liked because it breaks gender stereotypes. Women are promoted as taxi drivers, and it enables women to be employed in a fast-growing modern sector rather than the pickles and the stitching and so on. There was InVenture, which is promoted by uh, Shivani Siroya. And they have developed a system that can actually track a household's financial information using SMSs and mobile phones very, very cheaply, and can bring down the cost that MFIs or other banking institutions have to incur to conduct credit appraisals. And once a household has been shown to be credit worthy because of this information, these people who wouldn't have got loans otherwise will get loans. So we thought they had huge potential uh, to bring down operational costs and reach unreached people with credit. There was Sukrit Systems promoted by Narendra, the only male entrepreneur who made it to this shortlist. And he uh, has developed a device to monitor the use of sonography machines, which as we all know are used to conduct illegal sex determination tests and abort female feticide. And we are losing half a million girls in this country because of this problem. So they obviously are, you know, they can deliver a lot of social benefit if this uh, system is to succeed. And finally, there was Vindhya Infomedia, promoted by uh, Pavitra, who has established a BPO which employs 250 people with disabilities, majority of whom are women from rural backgrounds and from uh, below poverty line families. And what we liked about this was that while it's not very obvious on the face of it, actually this BPO enjoys a comparative advantage over other BPOs because this staff is less likely to leave. Retention is one of the biggest problems in the BPO industry and is likely to be far more committed. The criteria we used to decide who the winner should be was that it should demonstrate its ability or potential to have an impact on women, especially poor and excluded women, that it should clearly be uh, profitable and therefore sustainable, and it should have the potential for sustainability. The process was quite long and animated, um, and we finally decided not on one, but on two winners. And uh, can I announce them? So the first is Sukrit Systems for developing a possible <laughs> for developing a possible to solution to one of the most difficult social challenges that india has ever faced in its history and the second is vindhya for converting an apparent disability into a strategic advantage and enabling people with disability to live with dignity Congratulations to both, and we are privileged to be associated with you. Unfortunately, um, uh, Pavitra couldn't be here because she's had a bereavement in her family. But uh, we did speak to her on the phone yesterday, and uh, we will pass on the award to her. Thank you very much. While he couldn't make it due to prior, tra prior travel commitments, he has sent in a small, a small address. I would like to congratulate the team at IntelliCAP for completing 10 years and for recognizing the fourth edition of the Sankalp Social Enterprise Summit. Maharashtra is one of the most developed and progressive states endowed with rich intellectual human resource. Though the state has a high GDP and a per capita income, which is higher than the national average, we are still faced with a challenge of skewed and uneven growth across regions. I request IntelliCAP and Sankalp to focus on 
partnering with the government to achieve more inclusive growth. Industries and service sectors contribute to almost 90% of the state's income, yet 55% of the state population is still dependent on agriculture and its allied services. Development of this sector, therefore, is an imperative of sustainable development strategy. We can promote enterprises in agriculture value chains, taking the benefit of the programs like Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana, National Horticulture Mission, etc. Our future growth lies in innovations and application of technology in all sectors of the economy. Though we have large number of trained doctors, engineers, IT experts, and managers, we need to incentivize skill upgradation and innovations. The government has launched an ambitious skill development mission under which 50 million youth are targeted to be trained by 2021. The forum like IntelliCap and Sankalp should avail these opportunities and connect entrepreneurs with the government in taking benefit of these programs. I wish the Sankalp Forum 2012 all success. I now invite Mr. Sanjay Sethi, Secretary, Small and Medium Industries and Development Commissioner Industries, Government of Maharashtra, to address the audience and give us his micro keynote. Mr. Sethi is an officer of the 1992 batch of the Indian Administrative Services. He has held various assignments in Maharashtra, notable among them being the CEO, Jilla Parijad, Nandit, Collector, Dhule, Additional Divisional Commissioner, Pune, Municipal Commissioner of three cities, Kolapur, Thane, and Nagpur, and Managing Director, Maharashtra State Electricity Transmission Company Limited. Welcome, Mr. Sethi. Thank you very much. To start with, uh, I must congratulate everybody associated with this endeavor. Mr. Vineet Rai, who just met me, uh, it has been quite a journey for him, I'm sure. And uh, it, it really uh, gives me immense pleasure and, uh, and a deep sense of satisfaction that this kind of uh, an endeavor has sustained itself. I uh, not only appreciate this, I think uh, whatever uh, association from the government side, whatever is possible, I think uh, we should look forward to having this kind of an association with them. If, uh, if we, were, we were to talk about uh, the social enterprise movement, I think from, from Roosevelt's uh, Forgotten Man to C.K. Prahlad's fortune at the bottom of the pyramid. Social uh, entrepreneurship has generated a lot of interest, a lot of debate. While we uh, may still debate whether it is the third system or really the first system, whether uh, non-profit, uh, when you equate it with non-profit organizations, whether you're being really unreal because the for-profit organizations probably have generated uh, more sustainable models, whether, uh, whether CSR uh, really means uh, uh, social enterprise, or for that matter, uh, in a country like India, whether NGOs are the only social entrepreneurs as we understand. The fact is that uh, I suppose at least we all who, who sit here in this hall today, we all know uh, what a social enterprise is. We can, we can really point out who a social entrepreneur is. It is, it is that uh, practical, sustainable, innovative approach. It is that vision somewhere uh, to transform the community circumstances, but most importantly, the courage to translate thought into action. I think it is to uh, salute this courage and conviction uh, that we have gathered here. There is a, a school of thought which believes that the companies and investors have given more impetus to social responsibility, mainly due to the economic crisis. Significant losses in the mainstream financial markets over the last few years shook them and probably that old investing ideology had to be fine-tuned. Even though this may be partly true, the fact is that even before this crisis, when we understand it in terms of years, a lot of significant organizations had started making these investments uh, 
in, in most of the emerging markets. Microfinance and green investing became popular terms over the years, which in turn definitely served as a gateway to wider acceptance of the idea that financial return and social return can coexist. Today, of course, when we are talking about uh, Intel Cap, which is a shining example of uh, new businesses which are coming up to provide this kind of impact investment advisory, uh, if we were to call that. Uh, but definitely, uh, the various investors, which includes pension funds and wealth management advisors, apart from the philanthropic investors uh, that we were talking about till now. While uh, uh, I would say uh, today is uh, the appreciation day for uh, a lot of investors in this space, definitely uh, a big purpose of today's event is to bring these like-minded investors together to connect the practitioners, the investors, and the entrepreneurs in this space. This uh, brings us to, the, uh, to another dimension of uh, this ecosystem. That is the role demarcation of social enterprises vis-a-vis uh, -vis the government entities and government policies. Since I, I represent uh, the government, uh, the question that is normally asked is whether social entrepreneurs uh, exist despite the government, are they independent of the government, or, or there is that space where we could nurture, catalyze, and work in sync with them. While uh, Maharashtra has a very rich tradition of some of these uh, social entrepreneurs. Maharogi Seva Samiti of uh, Anand One, Smile in Pune. I don't want to take too many names, but uh, the, the fact remains that we've had this kind of uh, tradition over the years where some of these names became very big. We all understand, know that even uh, self-help groups in microfinance areas Maharashtra is probably uh, a state which has really made an impact. But uh, I would like to narrate some of those lesser known stories today, uh, which, which have been happening in the last few years. Some of them in the uh, area of actual uh, manufacturing uh, enterprises, whereby uh, micro units, micro enterprises have come together uh, as, as, as clusters, as we call. And some of these uh, uh, have been really uh, assisted by government of India, government of Maharashtra. Uh, there is a small place called Vita in uh, Sangli district. If you go there, you see uh, about thousands of women now who come from the adjoining villages, travel to that place. And uh, the kind of garments that they're producing there the, uh, the, the big names like Walmart, Madura Courts, Westside, whatever, uh, the, uh, the, the, the demand is too much to meet. But the, uh, but the real success there is that uh, the livelihoods improvement, when they say within about two years, uh, the average wages have gone up from 2,200 to 8,000 rupees. Now these women who could have been working on a standalone basis, when they have come together as a cluster, the, the, the points where, where the, real, the real game changer is what? Those common facility centers, which provides that value addition, which could not have been done otherwise on their own. These common facility centers have made sure that all of them put together can add that much value, which really makes a, a real impact on livelihoods. There are lots of such uh, examples happening across the state. In the coastal belt, if you're talking about food processing, mango and cashew clusters, whereby year after year, these clusters do not really, uh, or these uh, units by themselves do not really add that much value. But when you bring them together, at, go through the whole value chain, try and really uh, do, do a diagnostic survey, so to say, and then help them with this uh, kind of common facilities is, is what is making the difference. Today in the state, we have about 50 such uh, uh, clusters which are at, at different stages. 
uh, most notably uh, textile industry in Malegao, if, if some of you have uh, heard uh, this place. There are about 2.5 lakh power looms in the city. And over the years, these uh, uh, people hardly add value because they produce the same kind of gray cloth. There is no processing there. Most of the time, uh, the machinery is obsolete. They go on with the same kind of work. After having uh, uh, got into this kind of clusterization program, uh, that is where uh, modern technology, modern machinery, which probably helps them really uh, get, get into a completely new different space uh, on livelihood. There is another uh, very interesting uh, uh, cluster which is going on, which is about bamboo in uh, Gadcharoli and Chandrapur. Gadcharoli is the um, hotbed of Naxal activity, if you know. And the traditional bamboo artisans who till now always thought they were uh, probably, they, were, they are even called thieves by, by the forest department because they're just supposed to uh, get some bamboo in some way and, and just go on with their lives. They have finally been, we, we register them now as micro entrepreneurs. That is, that is where the main uh, difference is. And now while helping them, we have, uh, in fact, government of India has helped. We, as state government, have tried to chip in, have tried to bend some rules where we say, well, uh, they need not necessarily have one common facility center. We probably could have it scattered. They could probably work in uh, 10 separate different places where they could uh, really add value to what they are doing. And this intervention, which uh, is, is, is supposed to, uh, is expected to triple their workers' income, which, which is at present must be about 50 to 60 rupees a day. And uh, this involves uh, thousands of people in, in both these districts uh, in Gadcharoli and Chandrapur. While I am focusing on this because I deal with the uh, industries department, but the fact remains that there are uh, lots of uh, other ways in which, uh, I mean, apart from financial aid being provided by the state in some ways, there are various other ways in which uh, state government uh, comes in uh, to help the social entrepreneurship. Just, just one more point there where we also uh, run these programs on market uh, competitiveness because most of these entrepreneurs, when we talk about uh, lean manufacturing, how to uh, get into controlling the wastage or, or the incubators that you must have been discussing, all those uh, get support from uh, the state government, whereby uh, a lot of times some of these entrepreneurs who've been going on for years and years probably do not seek this help. But the fact remains that this help is available and it's, it's substantial help uh, as far as the government is concerned. There are some other schemes which, which really help. Uh, when, when we say government stands for this, government does this in any case, the point is that this is where uh, newer forms, newer mechanisms have come up and uh, where we can really make that difference. If you would have heard uh, in sanitation uh, space, uh, Sant Gadge Baba uh, sanitation or Swachhata Abhiyan as we called it, uh, it's, it's globally uh, applauded. The mass scale construction of toilets, building of infrastructure, organization of the sanitation workers, and capacity building, which, uh, uh, but the, the, requ the required investment in these related activities ultimately became profitable because the state government uh, could chip in. The Panchayati Raj institutions were made a part of this, and this has been a very big successful program. There are those uh, institutions or small organizations who work in sanitation space. Uh, I want to take one name, DVATS, which uh, works for decentralized sanitation uh, solutions or sewage treatment, which is uh, appropriate for slums, uh, especially in a state like Maharashtra, where we uh, have big cities where uh, the slum population is very high. In these cities, this appropriate technology is what uh, makes all the difference. 
from the government point of view, I think the support that is really required is, is there uh, when we say these kind of appropriate technologies ha have to be encouraged. When I was uh, uh, heading one of the city governments, that is Thane, as uh, Thane Municipal Commissioner, there's this very, very uh, uh, exciting uh, program on, uh, on rag pickers, which is called Sri Mukti Sangathan. But there are a lot many such organizations which have come up where uh, rag pickers are organized, given training to segregate waste. When, when in a certain health camp, uh, all 200 women say or are detected with health problems, uh, we should know and understand that how and where can we really make a difference. This is where the urban local body or the government comes in, uh, maybe provide some funds, maybe provide infrastructure. So those collaborative efforts uh, have really uh, gone long way. I think in, 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 there are lots of such examples in a lot of other fields, including agriculture, drought prone area program, the National Rural Health Mission, because when we say, apart from financial aid, uh, we, we involve NGOs today in decision making, uh, in policy formulation, how they can be a part of this whole exercise, how uh, the structure of programs like NMCP is made where uh, we don't structure it in a manner that it works like a, a government system uh, where it is more demand based is what probably is the main difference that's happening there. One more area where we uh, help this directly is in the procurement policies. Procurement policies where uh, some of these uh, articles which are reserved uh, are, which are made by organizations which uh, are manned by physically handicapped or blind people is again where uh, government comes in. PPP agreements, uh, especially in health and education sector, are also being designed in a manner uh, so that the scale and scope of social enterprises can increase. Uh, I, I'm sure she wants me to go down. All right, <laughs> I'll take just one minute. Uh, most importantly, I think uh, the government is keen to learn and replicate these models, fine tune its policies to provide a larger and more fulfilling space to social entrepreneurs. I'm confident that the strength of mission and purpose can be further strengthened by a deeper dialogue between investors, entrepreneurs, and the government. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sethi. We deeply appreciate your presence. I will soon call upon you to give away one of the awards as well. Phew. We now come to the Sankalp Awards India. I'm both excited and nervous. I sympathize with the finalists. It feels like I've applied for these awards myself. Um, our first category is the clean energy sector. The nominees for this are NextGen, Green Tech Aqua, Gibbs or Green India Building Systems, Ampere Vehicles, and Eco Rico. The jury for this sector were Raj Pai, Managing Director, Global Environment Fund. He was also the chairman of the jury. Kunal Upadhyay, CEO, Infuse Capital. Pradeep Bhargav, Managing Director, Cummins Generator. Karan Gupta, India Fund Manager, Incitor Fund. Audrey Selian, Doc Director, Arthur Aurianta Capital. Andreas Thurman, Senior Project Manager, KFW. Could we have the envelope, please? Oh, and the winner is Gibbs. Do we have? Can I have Mr. Sethi back again to give, present the awards? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Sethi. Our nominees for the next sector, the Technology for Development sector are Invention Labs, slash Avaz, that's the name of the product, Inventure, Milab, Eco, Eco India Financial Services, and B2R Technologies. The jury for the sector were Dr. Ashok Junjanwala, Chairman RTBI, and the Chairman for this jury. 
Kelly Michael, founder and CEO of Potentia Ventures, Satish Andhra from DFJ, Anand Lunia, executive director, Seed Fund, Samir Vagle from Nomura, Brian Casey, principal, Gregos Ventures, Nandini, the co-founder of Morpheus Fund. The envelope. The winner for this sector is Invention Labs. <laughs> Samir, can we have you on stage? Our next sector is the agriculture, food, and rural businesses. The nominees are Bhushan Agro, DripTech, Winfinet, Safe Harvest, and Cotillia Phyto Extracts. The jury for this sector were Archit Garg from Rabo Equity, CK Gopalakrishnan, Chief General Manager and Chief Vigilance Officer of NABAD, Paul Basil, Founder, Wilgo Innovations, Dr. Bikram Gujja, Founder and Director, AgriShree, Professor Sukhpal Singh from IMA. Thank you. Okay, and the award winner is Winfinet Technologies. Do we have them here? Uh, Ms. I call upon Mr. Mahindra Kumar, the CGM of NABAD, to give this award away. Uh, unfortunate, win unfortunately, Winfinet could not be here, and Mr. Anurag Agarwal, the CEO of IntelliCap, will be uh, taking this award on his behalf. Our next sector, education and vocational training. The nominees are EduSports, Easy Vidya, Rose Computer Academy, Priyadarshini Taxis, Class of Knowledge Solutions. And the jury for this sector were Satyam Damora, Program Officer, MSDF, uh, Mr. Dilip Chinoy, Managing Director, NSDC, Ankur Shah, Interim Country Director, Acumen Fund. I now call upon Mr. Dilip Chinoy to give away the award. Kanika, can we have the on envelope? The winner is Edu Sports. Dilip, you've, you've seen a lot of the enterprises. Would you be able to give us two comments on what you feel about these enterprises? Some thoughts. Um, so there were these entries in the education and vocational space. So what was very fascinating was that some of them focused on taking 20 to 100. Uh, some of them focused taking zero to a million. But what was very interesting that each one of them was uh, sustainable. Uh, all, actually, all were driven by technology. Uh, there was, uh, some were urban-centric, like Priyadarshini taxis. Some were totally rural, like Rose Computer. And I think uh, the, the interesting thing was, as you saw, the winner was EduSport. So it was taxis, sport, IT, K-12 education, uh, a social portal for, uh, for education, um, I think three of them are very close to, if I were to just take a pitch for NSDC, were very close to NSDC funding. I think one I've met earlier and committed, which is a, which is a very interesting thing, the Haryana model, which is very useful. But one of the challenges is to get many more proposals going forward that are really sustainable and scalable and uh, use technology in a way to deliver educational vocational training. Because if you don't use technology, you can't get scaled. Thank you, Dilip. Our next sector is the health, water, and sanitation. Nominees for this sector are India Home Healthcare, 
Nationwide Doctors, Iram Scientific, Merry Angels, and Waste Ventures. The jury for this sector were Vishal Vashisht, Managing Director, Song Investment Advisors, Adriana Halloran, Advisor Halloran Philanthropies, Indapreet Singh Chavla, India Head, LGT Venture Philanthropy, Jim Villanuel, Chief Investment Officer, the Ilios Foundation, and Manoj Kumar, CEO, Nandi Foundation. And it's Iran Scientific. Can we, can we have Adriana to give the award, please? Now to our regional winners, the nominees for the Sankalp Southeast Asia Award. The nominees are Happinoy, Marine Gips, Sun Labob, Bombastic Plastics, Coco Board, and Bali Recycling. Can we have the envelope for this? And the winner is Happinoy. Can we have Richard on the stage? Our special thanks to the jury of this sector that took precious time to study these enterprises. Shalaka Joshi, Managing Director of Unitas Impact. Scott Lawson, Managing Director of SoAsia. Vinod Kini, CFO of Avishkar. And Govind Shivakumar, Principal, LGT Venture Philanthropy. Now to our grand prize. <clears throat> Can I invite Audrey Salian from the Director of Arth the Artha platform to say a few words and thank you for constituting this award. Thank you, Rashmi. It is a privilege to be here before you and to represent the Singh family and Rianta Philanthropy through the Artha platform. We are driven to support the spirit of social entre enterprise and entrepreneurship here at the Sankalp Forum and our team has had a, a really great experience this week. The Artha platform is part of one family's work to enable the more efficient flow of capital to high impact enterprises in this country. We strive to do this through sharing uh, due diligence uh, and through a commitment to local Indian third party service providers in so doing. It is but one small piece of the momentum driven by all of us in this room, uh, present and active within this ecosystem. The Artha Award is Rianta Philanthropy's small way of adding a small piece of encouragement to the perennial spirit of all those in the room that continue to fight for the way to make a difference and to do so with the spirit of independence that comes from operational and financial sustainability. And this award goes to a truly outstanding social business that embodies innovation, scalability, and vital social benefit. It's an honor to offer this prize to uh, Iram Scientific. If we could have a representative from ERAM speak for a few minutes. It's a 40,000 USD grand prize by Artha. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for this acceptance. Uh, this will electrify our activities in the grassroots level to take this up forward. And we would like to see India to be a well-connected 
uh, infrastructure rich place and uh, this uh, will again uh, drive towards uh, this, this this acceptance will drive towards us that and and before uh, this event i should uh, say before this event i was uh, not familiar with uh, these kind of activities so i even uh, I don't know about uh, the venture capital industry so this is a great forum the real connect is happening between the innovators and the investors so i would like to be again and again in this forum uh, because that is uh, you know from this stand uh, this forum has the capability to take us forward to a 2000 crore company at least if we everything is right on the track uh, thank you thank you so much for your time thank you thank you riya well the session is just about to come to a close um, and before richard our managing director gives his closing remarks I would like to recognize a few organizations who have worked with us tirelessly in making not only the summit but also the sankal platform round the year possible. Firstly, I don't know if many of you know, but Dasra has graciously offered five complimentary guaranteed spots at their next cohort for all the five winners worth 20 lakhs. So an applause for Dasra. I'd also like to thank Bombay Connect for their com complimentary vouchers to all our winners and a couple of key partners Avishkar our investment partner supporting partners like Potentia Ventures Shell Foundation Haloran Philanthropies FCO UK Aid Nabard Defid and many others I would also like to extend our heartiest thank you to the grand prize um, partner Artha Platform and a host of our outreach both india and southeast partners thank you thank you very much uh, rashmi it's certainly an honor to close an event like this and i think that where i'd like to start is by congratulating all of you i think this is a wonderful event and i think it's impressive and productive at the same time to look at how much work was actually done here by all of you uh it looks to me like we had at least 600 attendees and i heard a rumor yesterday that there were more than 1000 during the day we had more than 150 entrepreneurs and i understand that they were all working hard in the corridors and all around we had more than 100 investors here all all in one place we had people from more than 20 countries we had more than 30 jurors who worked very hard to get to the results that we heard this afternoon we had the impact investor network met separately here with a wide group of high net worth individuals and institutions that are part of the intellicap impact investing network we had the business innovation facility had its uh, meeting and did a lot of work uh, with some of our corporate uh, partners there were more than 20 sessions uh, with all that i counted just from from the uh, agenda so i would really like to congratulate all of you on a lot of work that all of you did uh, i also noticed that the amount of networking that was going on outside between the sessions was really stellar i saw smoke at the top of the ceiling throughout every single break that we had the networking was amazing and i'm sure that a lot of you were able to make uh, deals that were very uh uh productive for for all of you and of course i want to congratulate uh, the winners so i would like to be the first to congratulate all of you on all that was accomplished here Uh, just a few observations and 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 thoughts uh, about what i've i've seen first the quality of the enterprises that were represented here i think is is stellar it would be hard to find as good a group of enterprises anywhere in the world for an event like this i would also say the quality of the entrepreneurs was also extremely high So I think that it confirms that India is going to be and is already a hotbed of innovation and social enterprise and it's going to be so for a long time to come. The other thing that struck me as I look out, you know, at all of you and and the, through the various sessions that I that I sat in was the variety of activity It was really stellar, not only in the different sectors but just the types of ideas that people had, the types of things that were being 
uh, presented to the, to the uh, juries. Uh, and just in the discussions, it was a tremendous amount of variety, which is, again, very, very hard to find uh, around, around the world. In addition, creativity. There was just a huge amount of people with, with good ideas and people not afraid to express their ideas and people looking at new ways of doing things, but all with a social mission. So this type of creativity and, and innovation, again, I think is very much part of the Indian environment, but also we had our colleagues from Southeast Asia here, and also I think on the investor side, a lot of people looking for creative and innovative things to do. So I was really struck by how much creativity and innovation you know, I could see. And needless to say, the passion and commitment of, of everybody from, from all sides was, was remarkable, whether it's the enterprises, the entrepreneurs, the people that are investing, some of the policymakers uh, here, some of the representatives of the government trying to create a good and solid uh, regulatory environment that, that's uh, helpful. All those things are, again, to be commended and really stood out in looking at an event um, like this. And I would say that uh, in my career, I've uh, attended a very large number of venture capital forums where companies come and pitch to venture capitalists and they're, and they're trying to raise money. And I can guarantee you, they don't feel like this. This is really a different level of commitment and passion. And I think it's largely because of the social impact that we're all trying to uh, accomplish. The conclusion that I would come to from, from, from all of this is if I said, you know, how are we gonna change the world? How is the world going to become different from the world that I described at the opening, uh, in the opening event with my slides? It's very clear to me that this is the way. This is the way that the world is going to change. This is where the future is going to be created. This is the way you're going to move people up from the bottom of the pyramid and create you know, greater equity and equality uh, in the world that we live in. So I think it's very exciting to be part of this at this, uh, early, at this early stage in a lot of these enterprises. Um, on behalf of IntelliCap, of course, that uh, you know, helped to organize this, we'd certainly like to thank everybody for uh, attending and for participating in such a, uh, uh, an enthusiastic uh, manner. And I would just remind all of you that IntelliCap is here to serve you. That is the reason uh, that, that we're here and why IntelliCap exists. We want to be able to provide our investment banking services to the many entrepreneurs and enterprises that are here and to help you raise capital which has been one of the challenges for all these types of industries. On the consulting side, we want to be able to help you know, donors, investors, and enterprises answer the questions that they have, refine better business plans, understand the, the uh, social enterprise space better. So we want to help on the consulting side with people's problems. On the knowledge and information side, we want to provide reports like the two that were launched uh, today, uh, landscape for the uh, social enterprise uh, space and on the human resource challenges. So we want to be you know, a thought leader and help to make things better for the entire um, sector. But I did want to remind everyone here that IntelliCap is not just the logo that you see in front of you and it isn't just a corporate title. It's really nothing more than all the people involved. So I'd like to have all the IntelliCap employees that have been here stand up and be recognized for the great job. This is a huge amount of work to put together something like this. Everybody should stand up, all the IntelliCap employees. It's a, it's a huge team effort to do something like this and everybody participated. Great, thank you. And then in particular, I'd like to, to just thank uh, Aparajita and Rashmi who have done a Terrific job on this. Rashmi, stand up. Where is Aparajita? Yes, yes. They're the ones that, re that really did, and they have a, a team, you know, as well, part of the people that stood up earlier, but the whole team, and mostly the Mumbai office, but all, but all throughout IntelliCap, did a spectacular job. And then the last thing that I'd like to do, just to close, I won't keep you any longer, was I would like to wish a very personal and warm happy birthday to Vineet on his 10th anniversary of founding IntelliCap. Congratulations, Vineet. Stand up, Vineet. Happy anniversary, 10 years old. Congratulations. He looks old for 10, but still. <laughs> Congratulations. So uh, again, Rashmi, thank you very much, everyone. We hope to see you again next year. And uh, again, congratulations to all of you. A very successful event. Thank you.